Hello everybody and welcome back to another uh, video by C.L. Aldridge Art and uh, this is my Sunday follow-up and uh, we had to end the stream a little abruptly uh, only because I had run out of time and uh, so I just wanted to show you the finish of what we did and talk a little bit about um, what I learned from it and uh, and how it ultimately worked. Uh, for those of you who do not know or who may be your first time here, my name is Christine Aldridge. I am an artist. I do draw coloring books. This is one of my coloring books. Uh, you can, I would love it if you would like and subscribe. And uh, you can also follow me on social media uh, at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and uh, I'm easy to find if you know C.L. Aldridge Art, because uh, that is my handle everywhere. Okay, so what did, first off, uh, if you weren't here, what we did was this, uh, of course, my books are published through Amazon, uh, so it is Amazon paper. Uh, this particular book is Flowers of Wonder, and I believe that it is my sixth book. There are eight altogether. Um, and what the test was, the experiment was, is to see if we could make water-based, you know, uh, double-ended markers act like watercolors on the page. Uh, now we know that we can take these markers and uh, put them onto a palette, onto the shiny side of a, a palette, and uh, put water on them and use them that way. But it is a very diluted finish. What I wanted to do is actually be able to color on the page and then move the color around. Uh, that was achieved using a watercolor ground. Uh, in this particular case, we used the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. There are other brands. Um, they work to varying degrees of success and you uh, should test them, but this uh, seems to work the best. So there is a link for this down below, uh, as well as to this book. Uh, now, this is by no means perfect. Um, and I put it on, you can put it on with a little brush. Uh, you, you don't use one of your good watercolor brushes. Uh, put it on with a craft type brush. And you coat the entire page. It doesn't take very much. Um, what I did is I just sort of shook it around a little bit like that, and then I simply used uh, some of what's in the lid, uh, and it was way more than plenty to do an entire page. Now, um, okay, now this started as a partial page experiment, and what I wanted to talk about is that this is smooth, 110 pound cardstock. And I basically, I used the Daniel Smith here, or yeah, the Daniel Smith here on this part. Now it did not leave any texture lines or anything like that. The watercolor ground didn't. It was perfectly smooth. And my watercolors, water pens, um, or water-based markers, thank you, <coughs> dye-based markers, uh, spread beautifully. Uh, you let it cure for 24 to 48 hours, and um, they were smooth, no lines, no texture, anything like that. On the Amazon paper, uh, because this is a much more absorbent paper of water, uh, it did leave uh, lines, almost like brush lines. Uh, 
and that is the ground and that is what let me see if I can zoom you down so you can see that that is what you see right here see those sort of vertical lines that are, are yeah vertical lines that are running up and down and it, you can see it over here uh, and it, it creates a texture that actually catches the color. Now, I happen to like this effect, <clears throat> but if you don't, then feel free to put the images on a smooth cardstock and color them that way. I happen to think that the texture uh, creates interest, visual interest. But that is one definite thing that I did notice, especially, you know, like up here in this flower, you can see it work and all of that. But who would have ever thought that you could actually get water-based markers to move like this? And if you didn't see the demonstration, let me show you the difference. Okay, so let's put that color down there and then try and move it with a water brush. You can't really do it, right? But watch the same demonstration up here. You can literally paint with it. And it moves all around, just exactly the way you would want it to. So that is what we did. This is the way that it finished. So my uh, thoughts on the experiment are, wow. <laughs> That's what they are. They are wow. How to turn your 9.99 set of 60 water-based markers that I got over at uh, Walmart for, uh, like I said, 9.99. These are the fine line super tips. These are made by uh, Leisure Art, but this works, by the way, with the Crayola super tips, uh, with any of the the, uh, the, the dollar store uh, double-ended markers, anything like that, you can turn them into blendable beauties. Just doing this with the Daniel Smith Transparent Watercolor Ground. It is about $11, but this will last a long, long time. And I put it on with a cotton ball. Uh, I used uh, just a cotton round like this from the dollar store you know that we get for makeup but you can use a, a like one of those foam craft brushes or uh, you know a, a, a cheap Teclon brush don't use a, don't don't use a, a good one um, but you want something that is a little bit stiff uh, not a lot stiff but something with some shape to it I would not use this brush to do it but this is you know this is how you would do it and then just put it on let it dry for uh, 48 hours and come back to your page and you too can make your make your cheap stuff perform like watercolors and get a pretty result and that is that for this segment on to the next segment thank you for watching Hello everyone and welcome back to the second segment of today's video. Um, I did want to uh, just show you uh, what I've been up to this week, show you a preview of Sunday's show, and I also have an announcement. Um, but before we do that, uh, a friend asked me my to do this. <laughs> this is my cat Steve Coriander, and... Uh, she is busily looking for 
the piece of turkey that I I'm had in my turkey. hand uh, a couple of seconds the before turkey. so I could coax this her up onto kitty. the windowsill so I that I could get her into good light and you could actually see her. But she doesn't make an appearance in my boo, videos boo, boo, very boo, often, kitty. primarily because boo, 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 um, yeah. she is actually forbidden from getting up on my desk. And uh, it took a long time to train her not to do it. And I don't want to undo that training by bringing her under the camera for you all to see. Um, so anyway, uh, these are, of course, the thank you notes. They are continuing. Uh, I want to try and send them all out at once, and uh, which is why I keep showing them to you. Um, but and nobody has received one yet. These are, of course, the thank yous for PayPal tip jars, for gifts that I've received, for uh, people who have supported the channel, and uh, who I really, really appreciate. Um, and, of course, who support me as an artist. Um, so this was the, uh, the one that I just loved, where we deepened the colors, and um, I've added the sparkles to the butterfly, and uh, white uh, stamens to the uh, flowers, and I'm just totally thrilled with that one. Uh, this one was so much fun to do, working, this of course is ink tense, working out the different greens and the different contrasts, some shrooms, <laughs> and I actually uh, uh, filmed this uh, in sort of minute detail, and then it was, uh, it just, it wasn't a good video, and so I have another one that I will do that shows you how I shade these. Um, that also is intense with uh, the Tim Holtz uh, Distress inks along the outside, and of course the Graphitense for the background and for the hands. And this is the one that I'm working on uh, right now. And on Sunday, if everybody remembers, uh, it is the last Sunday of the month, and on that Sunday, I do dedicate the show to an artist, a self-published artist, who I don't think, in my opinion, is getting the attention that they deserve. This is one of those artists. We did first see um, the best of coloring, adult coloring books by Preston over at the Modernist Colorist. Uh, Dev had gotten in a copy. He showed it. I fell in love with it, put it on my wish list. Shannon was kind enough to send me a copy for my birthday, um, along with the graphitants that we've been demonstrating. Um, so this will be what I'm working on on Sunday. Now, what I want to do is I want to do the cover image. I want to do it in the colors that the cover image is colored. But the kicker is I'm going to do it with the beautiful Windsor and Newton uh, Cotman watercolors that Melody was nice enough to send me for my birthday. Uh, I've been, as you can see, I've been experimenting with the colors uh, in, in making them. I have uh, been adding them here in the back of the book just to see how the Create Space paper would do it. This is untreated. We're not going to use the watercolor ground on it. Um, just because it, it really isn't necessary. But I uh, just love this guy's work so much. And if these are the best of, then there's bound to be, because I think he's planning a second volume, there are bound to be lots of treasures in these books that these images were taken from. So I have included a link uh, to not only this book, but also to all five of Dennis's, uh, his name is Dennis Preston, of Dennis's books here uh, down below in the comments. Now, uh, about the first time that I showed this, Rochelle asked me, well, I've got eight books out. She said, when are you going to do a best of? 
And so I took that actually quite seriously for two reasons. One, because people have been asking me for a long time to do a Mandela-only book. Because, uh, you know, I use a lot of Mandela-type design, but what I draw are not actually mandalas. They are, of course, more uh, design works built around what I guess could be considered mandalas, uh, mandalas, however you want to say it. And I have actually drawn several, although there are none uh, in this particular book. Uh, well, actually, there is one. Uh, I don't... Uh, at any rate, what I've done is, uh, throughout all eight of my books, there are enough uh, Mandela-type drawings. There's one. <coughs> that I, and there's another one. Uh, that I can adapt these for a Mandela-only book. It'll be eight and a half by eight and a half. So smaller than my, uh, it'll be square. And um, it's going to have, I think I have 47 that I can pull out and adapt. Um, and that, you know, obviously the Mandela market is a different market. And, um, and people love to color them. And, you know, there really can't be too many. Then the other thing is, so there's going to be two books out next week. Um, the Mandela Only book and the Best of book. Now, I'm very lucky in that I have all of the individual drawings in addition to all of my books in my Etsy shop. So I was able to tell at a glance what the top favorites of my fans are by how many of each individual drawing I sold while they were just drawings. So I pulled 10 from each of the volumes. That left me 80. Uh, and uh, from that 80, I narrowed it down to uh, five that I, from each book that I think go well together. And so those will all be in one volume, the first volume of the best of C.L. Aldrich art fan favorites. And um, so there'll be two volumes of that, not both right away, but the first one will be coming out simultaneously with the Mandela only book. And then there'll be a second follow-up volume closer to the summer uh, of the best of, of the others. So if you have all of my books already, and I know there are a large number of you that do, then you uh, probably, well, I would love it if you would buy it as gifts, but you, I mean, you've already got all the images that'll be in the fan favorites book. The mandalas, on the other hand, are adaptations. So they're, they're different and they look different. Things have been added, places have been filled out. A lot I've been doing a lot of drawing, a lot of uh, computer editing, a lot of all kinds of stuff to my hand-drawn drawings this week uh, in anticipation of getting those out. So uh, because, of course, new book hype only lasts a limited amount of time, and I released this just before Christmas, uh, Fabulous Flowers, which was the eighth book, um, it... the, the the new book uh, surge that Amazon gives is over. And so sales have dropped on this. And I uh, know that we are we always need to put in uh, new books. Uh, one of the uh, problems with being self-published, and actually if you go to a, a traditional publisher, your book only has a limited shelf life. Uh, unless, of course, it's so wildly popular that, you know, a publisher reprints it a bunch of times. Um, 
and so at any rate, and I'm just going to pile them up here so that you can see all of them. <laughs> and there is that. So until Sunday, when we meet again, uh, please, everybody, color something pretty. I hope that you're as excited about new books coming out as I am. And, uh, and yeah, watercoloring on Amazon paper. Can it be done? Yes. Of course we know it can be done. Watch me do it. Until then, color something pretty. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye, everybody.